Hey everybody, praise the Lord. I'm so glad you took the time to join me today. My name is Apostle Estella Priest, and this is a Healed to Build show. And one thing I realized that when we're ministering to others and we're dispersing, we're giving out the word of God, you have to be healed on the inside yourself in order to be able to build something else. When you think about a person who comes up with an invention and they start from scratch and they begin to build upon it and after they build upon it, then comes the finished product. Well, I thank and praise God. Am I finished yet? Oh no, honey, no, no, no. God is still working on this building, amen. But I thank and praise God for all that God is allowing me to endure, all that God allows me to go through, all that God is showing me and how God is preparing me, amen, to take this gospel, amen. I may not physically be able to go into Asia. I may not be able to go to Russia. I may not be able to go to Puerto Rico, you know, but he allows his word, amen, to go across the airways, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. We thank God for technology used in a right way. And I'm so grateful unto God for this ministry. Glory to God, hallelujah. The Heart Ministry Network, the people of God, glory to God who love God so much, amen, amen. I thank God for them. And we continuously pray God's blessings, amen, a favor, glory to God, and promotion upon this ministry because I know there heart's desire is just to reach the loss at any cost and to help build and fortify the body of Christ. Amen. Because when you, when we're, we're in this army and we know that God is strategically, we're marching to the tune of Jesus and whatever he's saying, amen, that's what we're doing. So we're soldiers. Amen. Glory to God. Qualified and equipped. Amen. To, to march into this army. Amen. Glory to God. We're not just walking. Amen. We're marching. Amen. Only to the beat that the Holy Spirit tells us because we have our ears tuned to what our daddy is saying unto us. Amen. And you can't serve him in the natural. The Bible says, for God is a spirit and they that serve him or worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's no error. We leave no room for error. Amen. We only abide by the word of God, the uncompromising, unchangeable, unshakable, unmovable word of God, because his word is power. Today, I want to encourage you. Amen. On a thought, God will take care of your enemies. You hear what I'm saying? I said, God will take care of your enemies. Now we're going to go to the word of God and I'm going to, I'm going to read to you what the scripture is for today. It's from the book of Nahum in the old Testament. Micah is before it. And then we have the book of um, Habakkuk behind it. So it rests between Micah and Habakkuk, the book of Nahum. I'm going to read uh, one verse. Well, no, I'm going to, uh, let me back that up. I'm going to read four verses. And the first book says, the first verse, excuse me, the burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Echoshite, the Echoshite, okay? God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. I'm going to say this again. Verse three, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. I think I'm going to add another verse. Verse, uh, the, the, the other part of verse, this is the other part of verse three, excuse me. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Last verse, verse number seven. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Hallelujah. Let me read something to you about the book of Nahum, because sometimes these books that we don't read a whole lot about, it's good to know the theme of this book and why was it written. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. Luke 12 and 48. Nineveh had been given the privilege of knowing the one true God. Under Jonah's 
preaching, this great Gentile city had repented and God had graciously stayed his hand of judgment. And we know the story how God sent Jonah to Nineveh to preach to the people, to tell them to repent. Glory to God, in other words, or this city will be overthrown and everybody in it is going to die. And I can imagine, you know, Jonah did not want to go. You know the whole story. Jonah did everything he could. He went in the opposite direction, took a ship, went to Tarshish. Oh, my God. And then, you know, the, the, the storm came up in the in the sea and everybody had to throw over the cargo. And, and, and then finally they said, look, wait a minute, hold on. Something on this ship is not right, paraphrasing. And then, you know, Jonah said, well, you know, just throw me overboard. And then, you know, this, this, this tempest or whatever that's happening with this 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 boat and the sea it will stop got so they threw jonah overboard amen Joni, jonah was in the well excuse me i said Joni. i gave a whole new name Joni. jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights all the seaweed and everything else that they ate man can you imagine for rebellion of not going to nineveh the first time so then you, you got to wind up going through all this, okay? So we get past all that. The, the whale throws him up on dry land, you know, seaweed wrapped all around his head and his feet and slime and stuff everywhere, all over the place. Ooh, I bet that was a mess to behold. He finally gets to the city. He starts preaching. He starts preaching. Start telling the city, the people of the city, repent, repent. I'm just going to say what John the Baptist said, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repent. But he was telling them to turn their life around. If not, this city will be overthrown. Okay, so different things started happening. You know, the process, Jonah sitting outside the city and waiting for it to, to, to be overthrown. But one thing I love about God, God will send a, a, um, a, a, a warning before, a de before destruction hits. And then if, if by chance you allow your mind and your heart to be changed, God will stay the hand of judgment against you. You know how your life was before you came to Christ? You was messed up, tore up from the floor up. Every single thing in your life was just upside down. And then you got to a point where, you know what? I need Jesus. I'm tired of this life. I want to repent. I want to give my life over to Jesus. And all the evil and all the wickedness and every single thing that you did to yourself and to everybody else, once you asked Jesus to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins, it was wiped clean just like that. So what God is gracious, he's gracious and he will turn the hand of judgment if you repent. So then Jonah, you know, preaching this message. Okay. So then, you know, the people started taking heed, you know, to what Jonah was saying, but Jonah got to the point, Hey, he got mad. Can you imagine God sending you on a mission? to bring people's lives to change them from, from, from darkness unto light. And then when God does it, you get mad. So he goes out in the city, you know, sitting out there waiting for the city to be destroyed. Underneath his little gourd, just waiting, you know, with his little legs crossed. I'm just waiting. And then what happened? Overnight, God allowed a worm to grow and to eat the gourd up. So the, 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 <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, so then the, 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 the um, little gourd that was over his head that was acting as an umbrella, now he can't feel it. He's feeling the heat from the sun. Man, he's about to die. Oh, I can't. I don't understand this. You sent me over here. But you know what? That just goes to show how God just, you know, you, here's this gourd I put over you to shade you and to protect you from the heat. Here are these people. I, I give you a word to give them to protect, to protect them from the heat that is about to come, which is judgment. And God spared that city. So that's what happened with Nineveh. Okay. However, Okay, so God graciously stayed his hand of judgment. However, now this is what it's saying. A hundred years later, Nahum proclaims the downfall of this same city that God um, had restored. Aren't we so quick sometimes to forget how God brings us out of one thing and another thing and another thing? We just get fat off of the word of God. We sit back, we take it easy, and we forget all the good things that God has done. And then we want to turn our backs on God like a dog going back to his own vomit. The Assyrians have forgotten their rival and have returned to their habits of violence. Oh my God, God bless them. Look, they don't forgot about their revival, how God had stirred them up, you know, revitalized their minds, put them on the right track. Now they're going back to the habits of violence, number one idolatry number two and arrogance now they're getting proud okay 
As a result, Babylon will so destroy the city that no trace of it will remain just like it happened before. A prophecy fulfilled in painful detail. She whiz. You know, because uh, um, God had to remind them, look, you get it together or else I'm going to destroy this city. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it if you don't get it together. The Hebrew word Nahum means comfort or consolation is a shortened form of Nehemiah, which means comfort of Yahweh. The destruction of the capital city of Assyria is a message of comfort and constellation to Judah. And you know, Judah, you know, was one of the tribes, but I always, every time I think about Judah, I just think about praise. That's all. I, I just think about praise. Amen. And all who live in fear of the cruelty of the Assyrians. The title of this book in the Greek and Latin Bible is Naom and Nahum. So, Man, that is really something to behold. So we talk about God's wrath on his enemies and how God is jealous and the Lord avenges. God said, I will have no other God before me. No other God. Nobody can take my place. Nobody. I don't want you to worship anything more than you worship me. Nothing that's, you know, wooden, nothing that's of stone, nothing of hay, nothing of stubble, nothing of gold, nothing of silver. I don't want you to worship nobody but me, for I am a jealous God. Then it says that the Lord avenges his, the Lord avenges and is furious. Okay. First of all, I'm jealous. Okay that you would share my glory with another. Number two, he avenges and he's furious that you have done this one thing. Glory to God. I'm building, I'm building something here. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. One thing I realize about God as walking with the Lord, because sometimes we do try to render, you might say that you don't, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You did that to me. Oh, I remember. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to find a way to plot against you. I, I, I'm going to get you. If this, if this is the last thing I do, I'm going to get you. And we say these things to one another as the body of Christ. You know, husbands say these to their, to their wives and wives say it to the husbands and the children try to make a monopoly over their parents and they say it to their parents and back and forth. And the parents, I'm not going to do this because you did that. Well, what kind of God, you know, God is not like that. Okay. Once you fall prey to something. And I said, as you come clean with God, you got to be honest enough up in here in your heart anyway, to be able to admit that you are wrong, to admit that you have strayed, to admit that you've gotten off the path, to admit that you're starting to feel things. Father, that's not like you, God, he is the Avenger and he will take care of your adversaries. As I said before, God will take care of your enemies. You have no need to fight in this battle for the battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to God. The only way you need to fight is to fight in prayer. Amen. Remember that movie called the war room? That's all you got to do. Fight in prayer. Amen. Because the weapons of our warfare, I always say that I love that they're not carnal because I say that to myself to remind myself, okay, Stella, don't get in the flesh now. Come on. Don't get in the natural. They are not carnal, but they're mighty and powerful through God to the pulling down, pulling down, pulling down, amen, of those strongholds. And sometimes you got to pull those strongholds down when you want to start getting retribution against somebody. You can't do that. God is the only one that can bring retribution against your adversaries in his own time. And see, one thing about us, we want to do it right now. I, I want to kill him, God, get him right now. But that's not what God is saying. Amen. So I just want you to hold that thought right there and I'll be back in one minute. Grace and peace, everyone. My name is Apostle Estella Priest, and I would like to invite you on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. to listen to the Heal to Build show with Heart Ministry Network. God is so good. I'm going to be talking about the book that God blessed me to publish um, from tragedy to triumph. It's about healing, restoration, forgiveness for the whole man. I'm going to read some excerpts and we're just going to have some fun. I'm going to share some scriptures 
Girls with you. I'm going to share some uh, different things that I went through and how God blessed me to overcome that. And I guarantee you're going to be glad you tuned in. Thank you for joining me again. I am your host, Apostle Estella Priest, and we were talking about God will take care of your enemies. I know that's good news to your ears because you've been going through this same battle over and over and over again for the last past three years. And you're wondering, God, when are you ever going to avenge me of my adversary? Trust me. It's in God's timing, as I said before we went off. It's in God's timing. You can't rush the process. Trust me, I've been down that road before. Now, God, now look, wait a minute, hold on. This has been going on too long. God, how come you just won't get them? How come you won't do this? Well, who am I to tell God what to do? The nerve of me. So, you know, putting a little humor in that. But God will take care of your adversaries for you. He will. Amen. Verse number, um, oh, the latter part of verse number two. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. God has it all saved up, honey. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm telling you, you don't have to worry about it. The enemies that you are facing right now, when God gets through with them, amen, you will see them no more. But um, in your process of going through this, learn the valuable lesson that you need to learn. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. Now, it takes a whole lot to make God angry. Do you hear me? You think about, you know, the, the world um, after the flood and, you know, God was so, you know, he saw it and it was good. He was just so happy that he you know, made this world. And you know what? And then man started acting up again, started, you know, uh, um, walking out of the authority that God had given unto him. So, you know, God got to the pain. He said, just repents me that I even made man. It, I'm just, I just, I'm repented. I even made and created man. <sighs> Cause you know, that was like a chaotic, chaotic world before that. And then, you know, you think about what happened and the flood came and everything was wiped out. Except for Noah, a group of total of eight people were saved in the, in the ark, eight people out of the whole big old world. And can you imagine they wanted to turn to God, but it was too late. Don't never let the time run out on you. You will never know when it's your last day. That's why you cannot resort to doing things in the natural without God helping you because God will help you overcome what you feel like you can't overcome. You got to trust him. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Trust me. He's a judge that's sitting on the judgment seat. You we're all, let's just think about this thing. The doors are open. We've now walked into the courtroom. Everybody has taken a seat. We're waiting for this particular case to be heard. Another door opens. Here comes the judge. So then the bailiff and whoever else is there who has that position says, all rise, please. And they mention the person's name and you may all be seated. So you got to realize that we have entered into an arena. We have entered into a courtroom and our daddy is the one who's sitting on the judgment seat. And at the appointed time, he hears the case and he knows the case. He just hasn't handed down a sentence yet, but you have to wait until he does it. Trust me. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. God will take care of your enemies. I don't care if he's acting up through your husband or your wife. And I have to use those things because sometimes the enemy invades spaces and territories of people that are the closest to us. And then we all start getting carnal. Then, you want, then it's a heated conversation and it's, it's all out of control. And God really, he can't, how is he going to hand down the proper sentence? How is he going to bring deliverance if everybody in the house is chaotic? He doesn't dwell in chaos. He dwells in peace. Amen. Glory to God. So God will avenge you of your adversary. Just wait. He will acquit the wicked. He knows what to do better than what you do. He made the person. We can't tell God what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it. You know, let this happen to him. No, that's a bad thing to say. I've learned one thing out of many things, and I'm still learning, let me put it like that. When I was talking about Job, Job was a type of person that he prayed for his friends, but actually his friends were act, 
acting as enemies. That's what I always keep telling myself. They're friends, but they're acting as enemies. And they don't know that they're being used as an instrument and as a tool and as a mouthpiece by Satan. So you just have to let God be God. It, it, just ask God to, to sharpen and heighten your discernment so you can tell and, which, and you can really see what's really happening here. Don't look at your friend as, oh, you know, they turned against me. No, look at, sometimes you got to look at it as God allowed this thing to happen. God allowed them to turn. Maybe you were too close to them. Maybe you became too familiar with them. Maybe, you know, God was telling you to tell them some things and you couldn't because, you know, you're buddies and chums and friends. So you got to look at it. God does a separating, not you. God does a separating. Always remember that. Somebody who was in your life before and then they're not there now, just realize maybe God could see something down the road and that plan may have taken you off of the, of the plan of faith. Maybe they may have started saying things to kind of weaken your faith, but you just trust God. He knows what he's doing. Okay. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. So I remember, I want to go back to a, a, a dream that God gave me years ago. And I remember a couple of years ago, I was standing in this field in this dream with this apostle. And from a distance, we were just standing in the field and all of a sudden the sky turned, it was like gray. I mean, really great ominous clouds. All of a sudden a funnel cloud came down and there was a tornado brewing. So what happened was the pastor said, let me go back and let me warn the church. For some reason, I stood to stay in the, I, I stood there standing in the field. I don't know why, but a God had me standing there. And this tornado got bigger and the whirlwind was big and it was big. And all I saw was a bunch of papers. I didn't see any debris. I didn't see, I didn't see any like um, cars, anything. I just saw papers, just, just a few papers swirling round and round and round and round. And as I saw it approaching me, I, I, I was standing in the power of the Holy Spirit. I didn't run. I just stood there and I saw this whirlwind. I saw this tornado just go right straight by me. And I'm like, oh my God. So then I woke up, I'm like, oh Jesus, I didn't feel the sting from the storm. And I want to tell you, when you stand boldly and confidently in the faith of God, you won't feel the wind from the storm. The Lord controls the whirlwind and the storm. Now, he could have allowed it to take me up and I could have been swirling all around, but he allowed me to stand. I mean, no wind. I felt absolutely no wind. So... Think about that in the natural whirlwind storms coming up against you. You got to tell yourself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? See, because I realize that the enemy, he'll try to work in fear when you're going through. But God has your back. God will take care of your enemies. You just have to trust him. Get in a place of rest. Because see, when you're not resting, that means that you're not focused. And when you get off focus, you get off course. And when you get off course, you, you know what the enemy has you. You have no defense. Because when we take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and use it against the enemy, it acts as a shield. Just like that when he comes up against you. It's just a shield that he can't penetrate it. Yeah, he's working all around it, but he can't get to you. You got to trust God, man of God, woman of God. And to you who do, does not know Jesus Christ yet, you've got to trust him. He's got your back. You got to realize that you are made precious in the eyes of God. He hasn't forgotten about you. He just wants you to open up and let him in. Now, this is a scripture I want to get to. Verse seven. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. I have to tell you the story behind this, the scripture. I needed a storage shed to put some things in. So I went to the place, the storage place, and I told the lady what size I needed. She said, yes, I've got one left. And I said, okay. She told me the price. She said, but this one has carpet inside of it. I said, what? She said, it has carpet on the inside of it. I said, okay, let's go, let's go see this. I'm almost like, you know, let's, let's, let's go see this great site, right? So she opened it up, pulled it up. We just, and I looked down, I'm like, oh my God, wall to wall carpeting. She said, this is the only one that's like that. And, you know, during that time, and I know when I talk, it always seems like I'm going through some type of test, but I thank God, hallelujah, that God reigns even in the midst of the tests and the trials, amen. So he told me, look up to the right, up in the corner. And when I looked up, there was a plaque hanging up there, 
from the, the top of the, um, the roof of it. And this was the scripture. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And when I looked at that, oh my God, I told a lady, I said, oh my God, I really needed to see that word of God. I really need to read it. I said, thank God. And you know what I love about God? God has such an amazing sense of humor. That was so funny. The only carpeted storage unit and a scripture hanging up at the top, specifically designed for me to encourage me. And that's why I'm telling you, when you are going through this test and this storm, amen, it may seem like that you are alone. It seems like everything around you is spinning and you feel like you, you don't have any bearings. You feel like, you know, my equilibrium is off. My, my walk is off, God. I'm not, I, I can't even pray because of so many things are happening. But honey, that's the time when you need to draw nigh to God. Don't never stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Glory to God. And give him thanks even in the midst of what you're going through. Yes, give him thanks. Because God truly has your back. It says the Lord is good. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. You got to tell yourself that this situation, amen, is going to work out for my good. I, it, it, man, it looks crazy, Jesus, but hey, I'm going to quote your word. And, and you got to keep on applying the, the same way that the enemy applies pressure to you. Apply the word of God. You got to apply it. You have to. Amen. Because the word is like, okay, you got an open cut and you got a, a wound that's on your hand. And you know, this is a tender part of your body. Oh my gosh. Woo, Jesus. And just look, look at this as this, this cut, this, this, uh, this test, this, this trial, this thing that I'm going through. Amen. And the word of God is like a healing salve. It's like an ointment that you just apply it. You just apply Apply enough, amen, to cover it up, amen. And then, you know, as you, you keep on looking at it, after a while, you know, that little cut begins to disappear. It may leave like a little teeny scar to let you know, hey, I brought you through this. And, and, and you think about so many different things, how Jacob wrestled with the angel. And at the end of the story, amen, Jacob was left with a little lint. So sometimes things are left behind, amen, as a reminder that you knew that God brought you with a mighty high hand through this storm and through this trial. You got to trust God. The Lord is good. I can't stop saying it enough. You know what? Because I don't care what we face in life, you know, what comes up against us. God is still good. There's nothing wrong with God. You know, we live in a world that's chaotic. We live in a world that these things are subject to happen unto us. So we just have to take them as they come. You're like a good soldier gets in a boxing ring. Amen. Or a good boxer. Well, a soldier in the army of the Lord and a good boxer in a boxing ring. Let's do the boxing ring. You know, and, and, and your opponent is, is hitting you from left to right. You know, and, and, and it seems like you're going down. And then, you have, then you're scheduled another, another fight. Then you get the camera and you start watching the moves of that of that enemy and, and you know who's acting as an enemy against you. You know how to how to duck and when to move. That's how it is when you're serving God. You gotta study. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study your opponent. Whatever it is that's coming up against you, you got to study it. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. You know, I think about, amen, when you're you're holding on to something, amen, and maybe there's a bar across and you're holding on to it. And it might seem like that you're getting ready to lose your grip, but then you grip it just a little bit harder. You know, you feel like you're getting ready to fall, you're ready to lose your grip, but just when you hold on to God, he's a stronghold, amen, and he fortifies you. Now, let's think about spiritually. He fortifies you. He has garrisons of angels all around you to keep you in the day of trouble and to watch you and to protect you, amen, from the wiles of the enemy, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And if you, ain't, you haven't experienced any trouble, keep on living. You're going to experience some. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Your days are not always going to be easy. Why does God allow this to happen? Because he's building character, as I said before. Personality. Mm-hmm discipleship, making you more like him. Amen. You know, and, and sometimes you go through stuff. You're like, oh my Lord, Jesus. Oh my God, God, I didn't know you, but hey, but if any man come after me, let him first deny himself, pick up your cross and follow me on a daily, on a daily basis. And there's a lot of denial, self-denial when you're walking with the Lord. Amen. God will take care of your enemies. Amen. But you got to deny the idea and the inkling to want to try to work this out yourself. Amen. You sitting up all night long trying to figure out how you going to work this out. Amen. How am I going to get them, Jesus? How am I going to pay retribution to them? You can't do that. You have to trust God and know that God really has your back. 
you know, you, you got him walking before you. So your, your back, you know, seems to be uncovered, but God has it. He has it. He has it. I want to tell you that again. He has it. Start trusting God and believe him. Amen. And it says, and he knows those who trust in him. He knows that you trust in him. Okay. Remember, you are the loved of God. Amen. He loves you so very dearly. So I trust that you have been encouraged. I love you. Take care. Peace.